This is your host, uh, how the heck are you? Yep, getting ready to do a uh, uh, barn chat. Office chat, coffee chat, whatever the heck we're going to call this. <laughs> anyway, uh, so today it's coming from the office. Um, talk to you in just a minute. Monday and uh, time for a barn chat. <laughs> and, uh, uh, get a couple of pretty cool things for this morning. Uh, one, uh, we're just a few subscribers away from crossing that thousand subscriber uh, threshold, so it's time to have a giveaway. And uh, I'll probably be uh, announcing that Wednesday or whenever we cross that thousand uh, threshold. And uh, yeah. Uh, some one of you lucky subscribers out there is going to win yourself a, a freebie. <laughs> so I haven't figured out quite how we're going to do it yet, but uh, uh, I'll be kicking that around probably today or tomorrow. Anyway, uh, it's been a, a pretty good weekend. Yeah, yeah, I hope your weekend was wonderful. Uh, looking forward to a new week. It's a beautiful day today. Figures you got to work on days like that. But, you know, at least you're working, right? A uh, lot of lot of neat comments coming in. I love this community. I love uh, the way you folks are uh, in there and involved, and uh, I, I, it, it excites me. Uh, it really does. Uh, it makes me feel that uh, there's a there's a point and a purpose to it. Okay. Uh, one of the uh, things is uh, I, is I want to get that catchment system redone up. I've got a swing by the farm. I've got some old drawings and uh, uh, blueprints in the barn on, uh, well, actually it's in the garage, on this uh, catchment system. And I'm going to get that transferred over into whiteboards and then we'll go through it. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a good system. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, if somebody wants to have a good, safe uh, water system, uh, this is it. Okay. Uh, little, little bit of maintenance, but other than that, it's pretty much, uh, kind of self-running. <laughs> okay. So, uh, let's see. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, just been great. Uh, we have, uh, went out and fed the cows a little while yesterday. Uh, I've got a bag of alfalfa cubes that, uh, I uh, uh, will treat them with, and uh, it was kind of nice. Uh, good looking girls. I, I've talked with them about changing their feed system out a little bit. They're just a little, little loose in the stools, and uh, which usually means that they're got too rich of a diet going on. I told them you might want to cut back. Uh, they they do uh, supplement with quite a bit of feed, and I think they're overdoing it. Because, uh, you know, I told myself, if you kind of cut back on the feed, you'll see their, you know, their little tail ends clean up pretty good. And uh, they get back into normal cycling. So, they appreciated it. And uh, started talking about how much and where, when. Uh, the boys that have the cows out here don't have a lot of experience with cattle. So, uh, they appreciate the advice. And I, you know, keep my fingers in it. <laughs> Anyway, uh, if somebody out there knows, because I, I found this out, uh, you can't PM off of an Android phone for some reason. It won't let you access anything um, as far as the about screen and so forth like you can with a computer. Uh, kind of curious about that. I really don't have time this morning to get out there and, and talk with uh, YouTube about what's up with that. <laughs> you know, uh, 
it seems like their uh, phone app uh, doesn't quite have all the features of the computer. Uh, so it'd be kind of nice to see uh, if they can fix that, you know, uh, really and truly would be. Yeah, let's see. Uh, having that little chat rambling at you Sunday kind of took away some of the things. Uh, this lifestyle, okay, not the one I'm in right now, but homesteading. Uh, I had a, a, a wonderful lady send me a link to a music video that uh, many of you have probably seen. Uh, if you haven't, it will touch your heart. But to uh, sum it up, uh, this thing is uh, says why we do what we do. And it's that simple. Uh, it's a lot about the lifestyle and, and uh, the uh, way a farmer feels get into his blood and uh, it's, it's kind of cool and I'll put a link to that down at the bottom anyway this one's probably not going to go real long because uh, uh, like I said I did my rambling on on uh, uh, Sunday but uh, one of the things you might just want to keep an eyeball on and I touched on that uh, Sunday is this uh, this snowflake situation where now all of a sudden they've jumped on the Second Amendment bandwagon where instead of wanting to ban guns, they want to keep guns and doing open carries and things like this and the whole time talking revolution. That's just not, you know, not a good scenario. Uh, and the problem is, is they're not looking to go after the powers that be that create most of their problems. They're, they're more worried about the conservative folks that voted for Donald Trump. <coughs> How we have degraded. Uh, we can't even have an election uh, without uh, some temper tantrums being thrown. And that's all this is. Democrats lost. They see that the Americans are beginning to push back on their agenda a little bit. And instead of looking at that and going, maybe this is not the will of the people, <laughs> you know, uh, they want to lean all over. Uh, we had the popular vote. I, if they could ever get the government to do a serious look at voter fraud, I can assure you they're going to find out that millions and millions of ca votes get cast that have no business voting in this country. Uh, saw it firsthand out in Las Vegas. I read some uh, reports of where a company had went in and, and started looking at the uh, voting results out in Nevada and verifying the registrations and they're finding out that uh, nah, there is a great deal of fraud going on in the state of Nevada. There has also been, when they did the recount up in Michigan, they found rampant voter fraud in Detroit. Just about every major election you know, local news and so forth in Illinois carried the rampant uh, reports of rampant voter fraud uh, in uh, the state of Illinois out of Chicago. So it goes on, folks, and we need to clean that kind of s stuff up. Uh, we need to quit sticking our heads in the sand saying it doesn't exist. It does exist. And if people would open their eyes, they would see that it exists. Uh, they even had a video they put out uh, where a fellow walked in with a box full of ballots and dumped them uh, inside the ballot box for absentee ballots in the uh, state of California. And apparently didn't speak much English. Yeah. So it's like, okay, yeah, number one, how did this young gent get all these absentee ballots? Makes you wonder, huh? So it's, it's time we, as Americans, insist, insist that the government take a hard look at this and start prosecuting voter fraud. They cancel out your votes, folks. All right. So did Hillary get the popular vote? I'm kind of in the Trump camp on this one. I don't think so. Um, you know. Her margin was so narrow that I think by the time you scratch out voter fraud, 
you probably canceled out her uh, popular vote. Okay, and it's time we get it fixed. Uh, and you would think. You know, the Democrats back when George Bush won the first time was all for the voter fraud, okay? But suddenly after George, nah, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't exist. It's a fairy tale, it doesn't, no, oh, uh, uh, Because they're relying on reports written by the very people who are committing the fraud. Going, oh no, it's not, it's not here, it's not, not us. And they expect you to believe all that. Uh, you know... It's time that we, the people, unite and say that's enough. Uh, we're tired of the lies. We're tired of the nonsense. We want this cleaned up. We do know it's exist, that it exists. And there's never been a serious investigation. i got to be honest with you. You know, I, I've lived too long, I guess. Uh, but when I look at even organizations like the FBI here currently, I don't have a lot of faith in them. Uh, that used to be a good law enforcement agency. And I imagine it still has a lot of good people working in it. I know a fella who works in the D.C. area, uh, FBI. He told me a long time ago, he said, don't report a crime ever to the FBI. He said, because you just became the number one suspect. And he said, a lot of times we spend our investigative time trying to hang it on you instead of trying to find out who did it. That's the wrong kind of thinking I got going on there, folks. It's take the easy way. That situation of the bomber in Atlanta, the fellow that reported it, they tried to hang it on and spent so much of their time and resources. The bomber was long gone by the time they figured out that we can't hang it on this guy. <laughs> And when you have somebody in the FBI saying that reporting a crime to the FBI makes you the target, that, that is a recipe for disaster for any law enforcement agency. Okay. Um, now you're hearing about all the shadow government nonsense and so forth uh, in the media. Uh, it's been around a long, long time, folks. A long time. And indeed... It's a problem. That's who runs the government. The bureaucrats. It's time we take the power away from the bureaucrats. Put it back into the hands of our elected officials. That's what they're supposed to be doing. Instead, the bureaucrats go to the <coughs> elected officials and tell them this is the law we need. And then they pile on regulations. And, you know, wonder why you have the regulations blowing up in our faces. Uh, if you look at our process of how people get paid in the government. Um, let's say I supervise five people. My salary cap is going to be at a certain level. Now, the only way that that cap is going to get any higher is if I now supervise 10 people. It goes up. 15, 20, 30, it's climbing. You wonder why you see these regulations being written require more and more and more federal employees? It's to the bureaucrats' profit to do that. There is no incentive, no incentive for saving. So there's one you could write to Donald about and say, it's, maybe it's time you looked into that and fixed it. There's my political rambling for the day. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, we're about four years away from uh, our thousand mark. We will be doing a giveaway. And uh, I hope you're the lucky winner. Okay. I wished I was a multi-millionaire and could pass one out to everybody because you're all special to me. This is Rich from Tennessee Homestead. I love you guys and I appreciate you. And that is a, more of a truth than you can possibly imagine. And we'll talk to you soon.